Here on the walls of the school, you can see a lot of holes, a lot of strike marks. So they would have been bullet holes um, that would have came from um, the resultant gun battle and the strike marks from the, the Loyalist and RUC weapons that were being directed towards the school. So we're standing here in the lee of Divis Tower. The Divis Tower is the only building remaining of a complex of flats that were here during the 1960s. They were subsequently knocked down in the 80s because they were so badly built in the first place. The tower block is the first place in the Koistia Tour. It's our first stop. And it's famous because here in 1969, some of the most intense and fighting of the period centered on the flats complex. The RUC had deployed three armored cars called Shoreland armored cars that were armed with 30 caliber Browning machine guns. And when they strafed the buildings, nine-year-old Patrick Rooney, who was in his bedroom at the time, was shot dead. The other man to be killed here at the time was Hugh McCabe. And Hugh McCabe's story is interesting in so far as, like a lot of young people living in the North at the time who was suffering from the discrimination that was practiced by the Unionist government, couldn't find work, so he emigrated to England. And the only work he could get was to join the British Army. So he was actually home on leave when he was shot dead. The main blocks, as I say, were knocked down in the 80s, but the reason why the tower block was kept was because the British Army had actually occupied the top two floors, and they had a very strategically important observation post on top of the building. Um, you can imagine just how much you can see from the naked eye if you were there. So it's important that when we start the tour, that we give people a sense of the backdrop to what was happening in 69, particularly at this lower part of the Falls Road. We will make our way along Divis Street, up along Divis Street towards the Falls Road, and our next stop will be at St. Comgill School, which again was a very important focal point for what was happening here in 1969. We're here now at St. Comgill School, which was the scene of one of the major gun battles of 1969 and it would probably be the first IRA action of the conflict. Even though at this time the IRA was largely unarmed and disorganized, some IRA volunteers with access to weapons came out through the school and opened fire on the Loyalist gangs and the RUC who were attacking the area. They were attempting obviously to defend the area from um, the worst excesses of, of the Orange State forces. Um, during the gun battle, one of the Loyalist uh, invaders, a man called Herbert Roy, was shot dead just in Percy Street. And if you look across Percy Street, it will connect on to the Unionist Shankill Road area. And you will also get a clear look at the Peace Line or Peace Wall, as it's called, which is at the middle of the road. So that fencing wouldn't have been there in 69, which allowed the attackers to come across. That structure, which we will see later on, known as the Peace Line or Peace War, um, was erected by the British Army. And I say we will, we will see that as we go through. Here on the walls of the school, you can see a lot of holes, a lot of strike marks. So they would have been bullet holes um, that would have came from um, the resultant gun battle and the strike marks from the, the Loyalist and RUC weapons that were being directed towards the school. Some are quite deep, so it gives you a sense of maybe heavy caliber weapons that, uh, that, that would have been used at the time. However, in recent years, a lot of money has been pumped into it to regenerate the building, refurbish it, and it has now become a very important social economy community hub for this part of West Belfast. We're here now at the International Wall, and this would be one of the most important sites of our tour here in West Belfast. The murals are painted to show support and solidarity with people who are engaged or involved in struggle that would reflect the kind of the political, ideological outlook of people in West Belfast. So even the, the whole sense of the mural being a community project or the international wall being a community project is tied into that thinking. Um, down through the years, as I say, Palestine and the murals around Palestine have very um, featured very heavily. Cuba has always featured very heavily in the murals here as well because Irish people would be very inspired by the Cuban Revolution. And Che Guevara, his name is Ernesto Guevara Lynch, because his great-great-granny going back generations, 
is actually from County Galway. So he's got Irish blood in his veins. The significance of the, the, of the murals are in that they give expression to that kind of political international support that Republicans would have for people across the world. And again, these would involve people from the community painting these murals as part of their political activism. The stop here at Sevastopol Street and the mural of Bobby Sands would be one of the most important stops on the tour. And for people like myself who were in prison at the time of the 1981 hunger strike, then not only is it of political significance and importance, but it also has very important personal resonances with people like me. Um, Bobby Sands was the first of 10 Irish Republican hunger strikers to die in hunger strike in 1981. The hunger strike came about because the British government had introduced a criminalization policy in 1976 in an attempt to portray the conflict here as a criminal gangster conspiracy and that Republicans were criminals. Uh, Republicans in the prison refused to conform to the criminalization policy and the criminalization st um, structure that was established within the prisons and embarked on protest which initially started off as the blanket protest, escalated into the no-wash protest, and subsequently led to the 1981 hunger strike. During that hunger strike, Bobby Sands was elected as an MP to the British Parliament. And as well as Bobby writing songs, poems, short stories, his character and persona dominated the period and his election obviously made him an international figure and brought attention to what was happening within Ireland. And from that point of view, when people come to Ireland, come to Belfast, they quite often come here to see the, 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 the mural of Bobby Sands because they understand the, the international and political significance of, of Bobby and what he, what he endured at that time himself and nine other um, Republican hunger strikers. At this stop on the tour, we look at the life and times and the writings of James Connolly. James Connolly was one of Ireland's foremost socialist left-wing theoreticians, a significant figure in Irish history. He was one of the signatures of the 1916 proclamation and he was executed by the British on May the 12th, 1916. Connolly's socialism had a massive and a very significant influence on Irish republicanism. And to this day, Connolly's writings would very much impact on and influence the way in which republicans would understand left-wing politics. Connolly lived here in Belfast for a number of years, where he was heavily involved in the trade union movement and organizing the workers, both the dockers and the women who worked in the linen mills. Connolly's reputation also went across the Atlantic where he worked in the United States with the International Workers of the World, or the Wobblies as they were known, um, organizing trade unions and promoting socialism. And his theory and his writings on Irish history, as I said earlier, were massively influential. When the center opened here a number of years ago, President Michael D. Higgins was the main speaker and he addressed a crowd of thousands of people trade unionists, Republicans, socialists, who came to celebrate a centre that was designed to promote the writings and the life of James Connolly. We're here now in uh, the Clonard area, and behind it you can see Clonard Monastery. This area here was very, very badly affected by the fighting here in 1969, with both Bombay Street and Kashmir Road being utterly devastated. The loyalist intentions at that time was to attack the church, which led to very intense fighting here. And the first Republican casualty of the conflict, Faye and Jared McCauley was shot dead in the street behind us. Um, in the immediate aftermath of their deployment onto the streets of the north, the British army built fencing between the streets, and this became known as the Peace War. 
But as time went on and the conflict intensified, the British military strategy of containment saw them building the wall that you see now, which is a long, single, continuous structure that runs right up through West Belfast. The reality, however, for people living here is that, and you can see it with the cages in the back of the houses, is that people here still feel threatened. They still feel danger. So from that point of view, the people want the wall to remain. And despite the fact that in around 2015, the government policy was to have the walls removed, survey after survey in, in, in the last years have told us that the people who live in proximity to the wall want to see it there. They want to see it there because it gives them a degree of security and they believe it gives them a degree of uh, protection. So if you'd like to follow me, we'll move along Bombay Street to our next stop, which is the Clonard Memorial Garden. We're here in the Clonard Memorial Garden, which is based here in Bombay Street. And again, Bombay Street would have been completely devastated here in 1969. One of the symbols that you see in the garden is the, the phoenix. And the phoenix become the symbol of a reorganized, a restructured and a rearmed IRA. The importance of the, the memorial gardens for the Republican community are that they remember the Republican dead. They also remember the dead, the civilian dead from these areas as well, particularly people killed by the British Army, the RUC and loyalists. Because one of the pol politically important elements of the Memorial Garden are the way in which here we talk about a hierarchy of victims. And essentially the hierarchy of victims is that the British and the Unionists see anyone on their side who was killed in the conflict as innocent, worthy of remembrance, especially with respect and dignity. And that is not something that is afforded to Republicans. Um, the, the, the IRA in particular, Republicans in general, are viewed as the wrongdoers. So for Republicans and people from this community, remembering the Republican dead and the dead of the community is embodied and symbolised in the garden that we're now standing in. We've, we've come to the end of our tour with Koshin and Ear Kimmy and with me, Pader Whelan. We hope what you've seen, what you've experienced and what you've heard brings you some sense of understanding of the conflict and the politics of Ireland. Um, this is a shortened version of the tour we do, so if you would like to know more, hear more, see more, you can contact us at Koistia and we can arrange a tour with you anytime, any day.